We're out here once again, and what are we looking at? We're looking at it from a data aspect, for those not familiar, correlation. And this correlation is somewhat of a mystery, somewhere between an Agatha Christie mystery and a Tom Clancy novel. What we're looking at is the total test results, and of course right here is 20 million, and cumulative death. Now what makes this really interesting besides the strong correlation is you have a high percentage of these total test results are negatives and of course you have your positives. So this is cumulative tests, both negative and positive. And this is for the state of California. This correlation, remember if a correlation is at one, that's a perfect relationship, makes it very easy to predict the future outcomes. Oh, you know what our correlation here is in California between total test results and cumulative mortality? 0.98. We'll just save that for simplicity. Here's a data frame right here from the beginning to the end, or most or recent, again, November 28th right now. 0.98. And note the kicker, California is not even the strongest correlation between total test results and mortality. I would have never expected a 0.98 anywhere in reference to that. The only stronger correlation, primary stronger correlation we really have as a predictor of overall mortality probably is the positivity rate. This is too small probably to read on the computer even though we're 4K. And for those not familiar, this is what's called a paraplot. Paraplot is how you look for relationships in data and so on and so forth, which leaves me with the side note tonight is going to be mainly geared Tours, data analysts, biostatisticians, epidemiologists, so on and so forth, mathematicians, you name it. But please follow along. It's still try to make it as enjoyable as possible. Uh, but also, too, as a side note, as far as information, now keep in mind this data is from COVID tracking. Uh, as far as information is concerned, the only data of reference that we really have is in reference to lockdowns. This is important. I want to go back to the uh, correlations in a second. I'm going to show you the states which are actually stronger, as well as my hypothesis as to why that correlation between testing and morbidity is so incredibly bizarre. But here we go. COVID-19 second wave in Myanmar, Myanmar caused a dramatic increase in poverty. And uh, This is important because you have to recognize from an aspect is how far are global leaders willing to go in order to basically stomp out COVID-19 or flatten the curve, whatever you want to call it. And obviously right here, you can have a blowback situation. And those will know exactly what's going to occur as far as the rise of disease and malnutrition, especially since the strongest correlation between COVID-19 and mortality is nutrition. But here we go. They, what they call it is social protection. And I'm going to read you one quote. Quote, of our 16% of our respondents who were poor in January this year before COVID crisis hit, which, again, their definition of poor is far different than here in the United States. Uh, but now 62% are poor. What is really worrying is that during the second COVID-19 wave, one third of our households said they earned zero income in the last month. And this was done in September. It's now November, and it's going to be heading towards December pretty soon. So in response to your question, in reference to the outcome of how far our leaders willing to go in order to protect people, they are so willing to protect them, they, are going to, they will push them to the point of starvation and maybe beyond. And I'm not being cynical. Unfortunately, the data is all we're looking at, and that kind of answers our question, and I don't like it. But still, regardless of that, let's proceed forward with our information. This is the correlation in the state of California between total test results and death. And as you scroll down, here's me trying to develop a slope. So, for example, if we had 290,000, sorry, 29 million tests, right, one, one, yeah, 29 million tests, forgive me on that. Then basically, if you follow this line up, you see how pretty close it's almost cutting right through the, the boxes. You're going to be looking at about a death rate of 
unfortunately, I don't mean to make light of this, so please, when I'm talking about these numbers, I'm doing it for expediency, uh, is about 26,000 at the state of California, if this correlation holds. Now, let us proceed. This is our positive correlation to total death, and that's going to be the only one that's a little stronger. See how it follows the line? Positive to the correlation to death, which doesn't really say much in reference to hospital treatment because you should have less of a correlation and time moves forward. All right, but here we are. There's our data frame. And this is basically our basically projected death. It's kind of curved here. All right, here we go. This is a little technical, but I'm going to go through this real fast. This is our what's called of least squares, regression results. R squared, we're looking at a 0.969 for those that were not happy with correlation. There is a OLS, uh, regression results, in reference to what we're looking at right there, total test results. There is our p-values and everything else, so then a warnings because something must be off, as they believe. Uh, then basically positive increase to death, R squared. Is that amazing or what? You would think you would have a higher R squared in reference to positive increases in cumulative death. But that's, wow. All right, and then we go to positive overall. This is cumulative, not increased, cumulative in death. And there's our 0.98. It's about pretty close to the, uh, the correlation on the OLS, uh, but it's directly right on correlation with basically just the COR method for those that want to know. And there we are. Now we're going to go to the states. Here we are, me messing around, doodling. Um, what I'm doing right here, emerging data frames between the populations, because it's be important, because COVID tracking doesn't give you the populations. The cool thing about OID over COVID tracking is the fact is our world and data does do the population. So you know that the cases per million, tests per thousand. And there's a reason that's important too, because it gives you a really good indicator of is the positive test resulting in a higher positive rate? All right, so basically here's our data frame, data frame, data frame. Look at this. You ready for this? For those that are still with me, a few minutes later on is now November 29th at 12 a.m. There's our correlations. All right. Try to keep in mind this is a little bit big. Let's see if I can make this a little smaller. Hang on. Please forgive me. Let's see. Let's make this 15. Let's see what comes up here. All right, there we now we got our, now we got our numbers. All right, Alabama, Oregon, Oklahoma, North Carolina, da 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 da. da. Where was California? Right here. California is right here, and that is not even the strong. That is the part that blows me away. We're talking total test results. Total test results being the strongest indicator of cumulative death rate. All right, again, that's befuddling. So there we are right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few of the top states as correlation-wise, a reference to total death, uh, total tests, and basically the cumulative death. And we're going to look at California, and where is New York? Right there. Still, that's, that's amazing correlations. It should be somewhere around New Jersey's level. Not even New Jersey. It should be right around here. So my hypothesis for those which are wondering what my hypothesis is to why. Uh, this is Alabama. Just to give you an idea. That's the correlation. So there's basically, what is that, almost a one? You want to check it out? Let's just see real fast. So if we go Alabama, let's see, da, da, da. we have some time tonight, right? I hope so. Total test results, and we do correlation just for interest, just for fun. And again, not to be little, we're doing talk, talking numerically. And did say deaths. What are we going to get here? We're going to get error. 
point nine nine eight point nine nine eight is a correlation between the total number of tests again you can look at this data on COVID tracking and I'll give you a, a great explanation what this the definition is which which I said is your negative and positive combined and your cumulative death rate 0.998 all right this described data for those again you don't need to pay attention to that if you want to da 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 running down the list here all right here we go ready first one this is our first top three in the far as the correlation this is test per thousand cases per million this is why in Europe they broke it down per thousand and per million because it gave you a really good perspective as whether those tests were resulting in more cases so red is tests purple is cases next one positive increase hospitalized currently strong correlation pretty close all right now what's this what are these straight lines total tests total deaths all right now keep in mind what I'm doing right here for those not familiar I am using what's called the uh, EWM and for those who want to figure out what EWM is again please forgive me for those not data uh, interested in data analytics as much it is right there so EWM is in pandas that is basically be your exponential weighted EW function yeah that's exactly what it is EWM and yeah you could figure out the M part so that's what we're utilizing and that's what I'm using to smooth the plots again if anybody asks for the code I'll give you the code but this this is the best way to smooth the plot guarantee just makes it so much easier to read and it's simple it's basic and it just kicks butt uh, as far as visualization all right so here we go Alabama there is a total deaths to total tests insane just amazing positive increase to death increase all right so you have an interesting correlation there as well so now again also too for those not familiar I have two axes here so it's not for example your death increase is not 1200 your death increase is for every, for example, 1,200 increase in positive cases. You have close to 16 and uh, point something a death increase. So just to give you an idea, and the date began on June 1st, and we're about to end in November pretty soon here. Next, Oregon, our second runner-up for the most unusual correlation ever. Test per thousand cases per million, red. Positive increases to hospitalized currently, right there. Second correlation, total deaths to total tests. There we are. So we've had 500 total deaths for about 600,000 tests. Positive increase to death increase, see right there. Now we're going to go to Oklahoma. Again, only picking the top states with the highest correlations to begin with. Here we are. You see what happened in June 1st? Remember I told you in the beginning I picked June 1st because it seemed to be normalization in the data? You know, you see that really weird spike? It's, you know, just to give you an idea, it wasn't because it necessarily started at zero. But that's just, just to give you a look. It just was a weird time when the data seemed to, to basically become easier to predict. All right, Oklahoma, positive increase. There's your correlation, total deaths, cumulative deaths, I should say, to cumulative tests. Maybe a better way to word it. Maybe I'll do it the next week. There we go to a positive increase, a death increase. Now we're going to go to California. California, here we go. California tests per thousands, cases per millions, always going to be that strong relationship. So anybody that tells you that more testing doesn't result in more cases, it's kind of a chicken and an egg type argument that I don't want to get involved with, but there's, a, but obviously there's a relationship. Uh, California, positive increase to hospitalizations. Interesting as far as California is concerned. So you're not having that, that close correlation as other places are having. You're actually having a greater separation, it looks like, as time is forward, which is interesting. Uh, make your own, draw your own conclusion. Here's your correlation. Total deaths, cumulative deaths to total tests, 
There it is. Bizarre. Again, like my hypothesis, that's we're done with this. California, positive increase, the death increase, and now for New York. New York is really weird on the data as far as the way it, the way it reads compared to the other states. Tests per thousand and cases per million. All right, interesting how they're all beginning to join up regardless of the state. They seem to be intertwining right here in November. Look at this. Positive increase to hospitalized currently. That's, look at that sh extreme shoot up in positive increases uh, to hospitalized currently. Now we go to New York. Total deaths to total tests. Remember, not a stronger correlation. That's why you have this band here that's there. But as far as, like, for example, going back to Alabama, you know, it's like, wherever that I, I went too far to give her that's just like insane so there's alabama and then we go back down to new york and speeding along not to make anybody dizzy so it gives you an idea of the difference of the correlations and then we have the positive increase to death increase red being positive and the death increase look at the gap something's happening and then, of course, we run into superfluous data there. My hypothesis. My hypothesis in reference to why the correlation, again, your hypothesis can be far more valid than mine. I'm just an amateur data person, maybe barely at that. So, again, I really, really would like the epidemiologists to kick in or biostatisticians, the professional ones, uh, not the armchair ones. Even if the armchair ones, heck, that's what I am. All right, the, my hypothesis to why the correlation is so strong uh, between total tests and total deaths. Well, think about this. If 45% of all your mortality is incurred in nursing homes, are they testing people after they're alive or are they testing people after they've passed on? So if they're testing people after they've passed on, yeah then your total tests may begin to relate with total deaths. I still would have a hard time being hard pressed to say it's a 0.98 correlation, but that's my best hypothesis. Unless you got some mysterious conspiracy out there like, you know, and swabs, you know, something like that. Uh, that's the best hypothesis I have. Uh, again, and or could just be just by pure chance. All these states have that strong correlation just by pure chance and everything else outside of that is speculation or conspiracy so let's begin with after that let's go to our world mask information look for data i'm going to pass it real fast let's run this kernel since we're looking at a new day anyways and so restarting the kernel meaning what i'm doing right here for those not familiar is i'm pulling up new api information and so what API based information is basically it's fresh data of the day from a and this one's coming from our world and data. No, that wasn't a last pair plot. I wasn't looking. There we go. Information, information. I'm trying to play catch up. All right, here we are. This right here is our mass levels. And this is the mass level right here, meaning when you see always this level is four, meaning mandatory indoors, outdoors, wherever, you know, public places, so to say. Here's your threes, here's your twos, here's your ones. Zero is no policy. And so what we use here to control here is Sweden, uh, primarily because the economic development index. And then we also pulled a few random ones last week as well. So I'm looking at the United States, Sweden, Colombia, Japan, New Zealand, Finland, India, Spain, France, United Kingdom, and Italy. And we begin now. So this is where we're at. Deaths per million, this is our mask mandates. Now remember, each state has different value systems for as reference to mask. So it's really kind of still a guesstimate on a global scale. So OWID, or Our World and Data, put us on a four. And here we are, our mass level again, four cases per million. So for whatever reason, again, 
there's a lot of correlation, but again, as far as the masks are concerned, is how strong is the correlation with cases, prevention of cases, uh, and how well the masks actually work. Again, it's weak in analysis, but it's truly, really, really on a large scale, it's the best we have. Tests per thousand, cases per million. That's the whole state. All right, now we look at Sweden. Remember, zero, no mask mandate. This is their deaths per million. Again, they made it in the papers. People go, ah, oh, Sweden's falling apart, blah, blah, blah. Again, looking at close to two and a half uh, deaths per million. Sweden with no masks or really pandemic mitigation efforts in place compared to the United States, which has really gone pretty strong in the lockdowns and the masks. Looking close to about five per million compared to doing nothing. And we're comparing apples to apples. And the United States has some dense areas of population, but also too some areas with very, very, uh, you know, not dense population. Sweden cases per million shot up, boom, boom, boom. There it is. Uh, mass level still zero. This is what everyone's focusing on: is the massive number. Now keep in mind, look at this. Tests, cases, tests, cases, correlation. No tests prior. Start doing testing. Look what happens. But yet, death rate still pretty low. And then we go Colombia. Again, it was at a four. This is a good example because then they dropped it down. That's their deaths per million. And still pretty uh, better than the United States. Colombia. Uh, basically looking at mass level. There we are. That's a one. Right about the same as... What am I talking about? That's Columbia. Yeah, right around that area. I always lost, lost track for a second. All right, then we go to Japan. We're looking at a one. Japan boosted themselves up on the mass level to a three. Uh, yet, maybe one or two people may have died. Uh, but look, you see what they've done there? And they just hit a three now. And that's what their cases per million are, mass level. This is their tests. Again, you cannot say that doing more tests did not result in more cases. Again, are you finding more people infected? Blah, blah, blah. Or were they always infected before, just as you're never running enough tests to find out, depending on the length and duration of how long they held the, um, you know, whatever it is they're testing for to determine the presence of COVID-19. New Zealand. All right, there's our mask level. Went up, 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 down, down, down. Again. Sometimes looks overprotective, but there's your correlation. Mass level went up to two, back down to one. And two, one. Cases, as far as tests and cases, interesting because their tests don't result in that, that intertwining as other countries do. Finland, they're experimenting with, they were doing zero. They went to a one on the mask mandate. When it looks like they should have done it there, but they did it there. Uh, that's their cases per million. And of course, look what's happened. Their testing goes up, their cases go up. India, mass level four, deaths per million. Pretty low for a country that's a lot of it's in poverty. And still yet, look at that. Look at that. That's the mass level five, that's cases per million. Deaths per million, cases per million, back that up. Tests per thousand to cases per million. A little bit of intertwining there, but you get an idea. And then Spain, which was experiencing some hardship there. Right there, mass level four. Cases going, deaths per million were going up pretty high. Cases per million uh, in correlation and dancing with the masks. Right there, and tests per thousands. Interesting because, again, what's happening first? Are you actually detecting more? Uh, or are you testing more and re coming up with more positive results? What, even though many people were asymptomatic. Again, don't know. France. Here we are. Mass level. Right there. Wonder if it's going to make a difference. Look at that. That was pretty high back in France. Uh, to a four, but that doesn't seem to be doing much as far as people are going to say, well, they're always going to give the answer. It could be a lot worse if the mask mandates were in place. 
yeah, possibly true, possibly not. We don't know. We need controls. France, look at this, cases per million. And that's with the mass mandate in place. And that's a long rise. Look at that. It was going up regardless. And then France, cases per million, so on and so forth. United Kingdom, there we are. Uh, they're going to end their quarantines, I think, or whatever it is. Their lockdowns coming up on December 2nd. Deaths per million, uh, definitely higher than the United States. Mass levels out of two. And mass level of two, cases per million, the mass level. And then look what tests per thousand, and there's our cases per million. Italy, now this is interesting. Italy had a really high death rate. Remember, that made global news. And it was in the news for quite some time, back in April. Look at the deaths per million now. And you really don't even hear about them in the news anymore. Mass levels went up. It can make do three here. It looks like the masks work, right? Out of four. But when they go down to three, look at this. It makes you wonder. It's just correlation again. Here we are, cases per million. Let's check out the testing. Interesting. Now, the only thing that's uh, really disturbing here is, of course, basically their death rate has gone up quite a bit. So let's see, we're here. That's kind of the blah, blah, blah. All right, let's move through. Uh, let's see, COVID states. What we have here. All right, that's South Dakota. They have like a very sparse population. That's why you get the massive up and down. We should, that's, that's something you want to use an EWM on. Uh, positive per 100,000. Moving through here. That is basically total. I'm just going to go down a little faster. Uh, this is death increase per total. Remember, Florida ended a lot of its lockdowns. Where are we at here? Positive per 100,000. Different right there. Again, we're starting back, I think, a little, yeah, about right before the elections. So we're looking mid October. All right, there's that. Because I think that's when they ended their lockdown. So I wanted to choose that date. And so here we go, Florida again, deaths per 100,000. Now, can you tell me, now, New York and California do a lot of lockdowns, and Florida's not. So there's your control. You tell me. All right, we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, da da da. There's your cumulative deaths, and there's your positive increase per states. And so where is Florida? You're right there. There's California. Again, look. That's our increases in New York. New York has actually been doing pretty well, but they're doing a lot of economic hardship. They're right there. Again, Florida, no lockdowns, no laws. This reference to the pandemic mitigation are very few, yet they seem to be doing pretty well. All right, now let's go with boom, 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 population of Scandinavia. Again, this is our Fauci chart because he had something against Scandinavia. Total cases per million, total deaths per million compared to our Scandinavian countries. New deaths smooth per million. And again, here's our chart right here. Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, USA. All right, Sweden's pretty much down there. Iceland was up there for a little bit and then just dropped all of a sudden, precipitously. New cases smooth per million. Who's at the top here? Who's brown? USA. Who's purple? Sweden. Isn't that interesting? The same number of cases per million. Same number of cases per million. Yet, basically what we're looking at is the death rate is so much lower. Uh, think about that. Same cases per million, but the deaths per million is so much lower. That's on September 1st. New deaths moves per million. Here is Sweden. And there is the United States. Sweden just was beginning to pick up, then just dropped down. Iceland, again, low population, it's dropped back down to a minimal amount. There's our other information. That's our new deaths compared to other countries, so on and so forth. Let's go to our investigation and other correlations. Remember, the correlations here, we're looking at age, population density, the whole lineup. And again, life expectancy and overall case mortality. Here is what we're looking at. Now, remember, this doesn't go to different pandemic mitigation strategies. These are the countries with the Longest life expectancy here, going all the way down to here. So the United States is just above Cuba, Estonia, and Poland. And so here's our countries. Overall mortality rate. Life expectancy doesn't play much of a role there. All right, there's our current case mortality. 
A lot of countries, for example, even Italy's up there, do, 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 United States, pretty low, in reference to life expectancy and case mortality as far as a correlation. Now look at the population density. Overall case mortality at the beginning, now, regardless of population density, you can't say population density plays a huge role in COVID-19 mortality. All right, next, total cases per million. Montenegro, Luxembourg, Bahrain, French Polynesia, place you wouldn't even guess. All right, and then total deaths per million. Peru, Italy, United Kingdom. Even though, for example, these countries right here have a higher case per million load than anybody else, the deaths per million are not. You see Montenegro, Luxembourg, or Bahrain looking? No, you don't. Again, you need to have controls and correlations. You just can't make judgment based upon the country that you're in. All right, cases per million. We're going to pass through this information here. Uh, da da da. New death smooth per million. The other thing about why. Uh, made a list. And then we go up to Mexico. And then we go to USA. It's now 4.5 deaths per million. So, whoops. That's what I need to do. So we went up. Last time we were at 4.3. Now we're at 4.5. So these are all the countries. What well, we're going to have to make it 4.55, I would just say. All the countries which are doing better. When I first started this, it was at 3.6. Our deaths per million have went up to 4.55. So now these are all the countries doing better than the United States in reference to deaths per million smoothed. Argentina, Mexico, Netherlands, Colombia, and so on and so forth. You can read the chart through there. All right, COVID data focus here. Dun, dun, dun. Make sure I'm on the right date there, the 28th, correct? And looking at the first pair of plots we came up with, hospitalization increases to positive increases. I know you hear that a lot, right? And we are looking at data from the COVID tracking data. And we are looking at, yep, so it's the United States. I know you hear it, but look at that overall. Do you see a hospitalization increase? Not from the beginning, from March, but you do see a lot of positive increases. And this is a hospitalization increase, the death increase. You saw a solid correlation. That should add the total test results in that. This is at the beginning, right before the election, which I told you about, and also right after the Florida ended their lockdown. That an interesting rise, and that's our numbers there. There's our positive increases. Look, they're bouncing all over the place now uh, after the election. And there is basically what we're looking at here is positive to hospitalization percentages. See, it's been going down slowly. I think that's kind of flat line there. Please give me a reference to the language. But positive to hospital percentage, uh, positive to percentage to death. It's dropping pretty dramatically. Again, you see these little curves right there that's reporting things. I can do the EWM method on this and smooth this out pretty nicely. All right, then we're going here. Death increase, da, da down there, da, da there. There's a focus, there's a focus. Hospitalization increase, death increase. Uh, do, do, do. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going to go to our world data. And our world data, just to make sure we're on target here, is updated as November 28th today. So overall, worldwide, cases smooth per million. Uh, look, a little bit of a drop there. Now we're talking globally. So that's interesting data overall. Decimal per million, a little bit of a rise. Mortality percentage of positive cases, a little bit of a rise. All right, there we are. And then data, data, we already saw. Here we're looking at Great Britain, Japan, South Korea. What we're looking at here, we're going to include Sweden again. Sweden's in purple. There's a lot of our Asian countries, Japan, Taiwan. Singapore, remember Singapore we chose because of population density. Who is blue? Uh, it's cases that begin to drop just a little bit. And then deaths per million, we're looking at from November 15th. And here we're up to today. Looking at Great Britain, still leading the United States. And then Sweden begin to drop down. Our Asian countries, again, barely scratch the surface. Uh, Sweden, United States, comparatively, new death smooth per million. There we are at 1.966, and this one only went up to 27, so at 4.7, even though we just saw it at 4.5 before. So there we are right there, 
And then is that uh, comparatively New deaths in Sweden? This is uh, yeah, New just smooth. United States, Sweden, smooth per million. This is deaths overall. All right, that's actually pretty high for Sweden. So that was 16 uh, compared to basically the 1,189 for the United States. And there's our comparisons, comparisons, comparisons. And then Monte Carlo, look at this. This is the new desk current in the United States. You can see that rise right there. And this is from the 27th. And this is projected cases per million, which obviously no place else to go but up a little bit. And then, but death rates, strong possibility they're gonna be going down. Right now I said about 4.5, 4.7. So that's about that target rate right there. So Monte Carlo will be estimating by March 15th Unless anything else changes, it's probably going to be close to the same, if not just a little bit lower. If we all run the mean on that, and nah, I take that back. Its mean is at 5.52. So they're seeing at this current rate, the United States, for whatever it is, in reference to their reporting, uh, will be a little bit higher than it is even today by about uh, one per million. Again, Ralph Trichana signing off once again. If you've been with me this long, congratulations. That's a long time looking at data. But in any case, if you need any code or whatever it is, I'll post it on YouTube or GitHub. But as always, gratitude. But I'm really, really curious. I, for those of you who are a lot better at math and statistics, uh, statistics than I am, if you can give me your hypothesis in reference to why the correlation between total test results and cumulative deaths is so incredibly intertwined, I will be grateful. If you're not certain yourself, send it to a friend, whatever it is, don't have to watch the whole video, just look at the correlations, check out the math, check out the data, I'll give you whatever data you need. Uh, but if for reference to that, my hypothesis potentially could that could play a role, but I can't say it's solid, is basically testing of individuals post mortem. Again, uh, whatever your hypothesis is, it's just as good as mine. Ralph signing off. Thank you. Good night. Gratitude. And look forward to seeing many of you back on Tuesday. And I'll catch you all next time. See you then. Bye.